So you said you had an ambitious promoter that put you in a lot of stuff. I'm sure you talk about Butch Lewis, right? Yeah, yeah. What do you think, like, I consider that a real promoter that keeps you out there, keeps you in front of everything. And I don't see that much these days. Can you give us a little insight on Butch Lewis' uh, motor of operandus? Man, Butch was a, a busy body. And uh, he, he was good. He was good. And uh, for, for him not to have ever put on a, a pair of gloves to get in the ring and box, I found him very, very good as a, a, a promoter. I mean, I, he, he had never put, strapped on a pair of gloves to get in the ring and the box. But he was a good matchmaker. Mm. He was a very good matchmaker. Because he matched Leon with Muhammad Ali. Talked Muhammad into fighting Leon. Talked Larry Holmes into fighting me. I found some way to get him, in, get, <laughs> get him to the table, yeah, because they didn't know. They didn't know. Both, both of them, I'm, I'm sure Muhammad thought that Leon was yeah. wasn't going to wasn't give him too much, of, too much trouble. And I know Larry Holmes thought I wasn't going to give him any, any trouble. And Bush set him up. Hmm. He set both of them up. Bush had that gift again. He was a used car salesman, though, right? Yeah. I said used car salesman again. No, right? no lie, no lie. You ain't lying about that. So I used to ask him all. That's <laughs> right, that's right. And, and we had a president that was a car salesman. Really? Yeah, he, he sold cars and uh, went on to be a president. I forget that guy's name. Yeah. Gift the gab, man. Yeah, yeah, because they, all they do is run their mouth and <laughs> sell you all some, some, some stuff that you don't want or that you want, but it was all right. But Bush, Bush, Bush was pretty good. And then he was, he had a sense of humor. He had a great sense of humor. Yeah. Yeah. That was a part of his, his thing, though. So he had to lure you in with the comedy. Right. And then, bam, make right. it. Right. <laughs> That's right. Absolutely. What other kind of things did he have you do to keep you out there as a fighter? He had you on TV shows and movies. What other kind of things did he well, have you do? Well, the, the interviews would come, would come to him, and then he'd uh, bring it to me, and then I'll, I'll um, get interviewed by these guys, mm. you know. But he, he, knew, he, knew, he knew me very well, and I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't do everything, you know. I, I didn't like it. I mean, I, I didn't like doing everything. What do you mean everything? Well, I, I, I didn't like, you know, all the interviews and, you know, um, I, yeah, I had a lot, a lot of people wanting to interview me, want to interview or uh, take pictures. They want to do, want to do something that I, I, I wasn't, wasn't too interested in, interested in. But if it was important, I had, I did it. Mm -hmm. If it wasn't important, I didn't do it. <laughs> I was kind of like that. Kind of shy, would you say? You could say that. Okay. Yeah, I ain't really care about... Uh, I, I never thought I was that good, though. You know, what do you I, mean? I never thought I was good at, you know, in interviews or, or with rapping or talking. You know, I just... I was... Um, I just didn't think too much of myself as a, you know, a, a mouth runner. Yeah. But uh, as time went on, I, I, I picked it up. You picked it up? <laughs> yeah, as time went on, I picked, picked it up. up. You got it from Butch. <laughs> sort of, sort of, kind of. How did you get uh, hooked up with Butch? Butch came to the Olympics. Mm. He came to the Olympics. He was out there hooping and hollering in the audience and <laughs> making all kind of noise. And uh, after the fight, we, we, we go to a uh, press room. Something like this, mm -hmm. press room, me, Butch, and uh, one of the officials uh, that was a part of the uh, Olympics. And uh, they made sure that it was, everything was all right with, the, with, with the, the guys that wanted to talk to us after the fight. So and when Butch came to the, the dressing room, he said, hey, and he, he, was flanked, he was flanked with two women. Mm. Woman on the success side, woman on that side. And he was all clean and everything and dressed up. And he said, hey, he said, I, I know you want to turn pro. He said, I got some good, good things for you in, in turning pro. And I told him, I, this is what I, I demonstrated. I said, you know what? 
Uh, he said, so you want to turn pro? I said, well, I said, let me tell you like this. Because I've been, I've been away from home since J June the 11th. June the 11th. June 11th till August the 2nd of 76. Mm. We, we was away from home just that long. And I told Bush, I said, I said, um, he said, you want to turn pro? I got, got, some, got some good stuff I want to talk to you about. So anyway, I said, you know what? I said, I've been away from home so long. I said, this is all I want to do right now because it's over. And I, I, I'm going home tomorrow or, or next couple of days. I said, this is all I want to do. I, I laid back. I did one of these numbers on it. I said, <laughs> I said, it's all I want to do right now. <laughs> it's all I feel like doing. And that's what I did. And so I said, but you give me, I, I'll give you my number. You can call me just in case I change my mind. Because I, 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 didn't, I didn't really want to fight as a pro. No? No. Why not? Because it's a dirty business. It's dirty, dirty, dirty business. A dirty, 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 dirty business. Boxing is a dirty business? Yeah, it's no. a dirty business. I mean, yeah, because, I mean, Boxers are always coming out with no money. The majority of them, the majority of them coming out with no money. And that ain't no good thing to be in. I mean, you, you do, you're doing all this fighting and you ain't getting, you ain't getting your money. And, that, and the thing where I say, I'm, I'm afraid, if I'm going to take my money, I'm going to hurt somebody. Hey, I need you on that one. So I said, I, 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 so I, so I ain't, I ain't on turn pro because I don't want to hurt nobody. I don't want nobody you know, trying to stick me up for my money. Cause I ain't gonna take it like no man. Hmm. I'm gonna hurt him. I'm gonna, I'm gonna <laughs> bust somebody upside the head with, with something. Baseball bat, you know. Cause I and, and I just and I heard about heard I heard a watching boxing growing up. I, you, know, you hear all the bad stories on, on the guys not getting their money or losing money. Mm -hmm. I was like, damn. I mean, I said that's that's that's, that's got to be. I mean that's got to be really messed up. I mean you 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 get in the ring, do all the fighting, then your your handlers steal your money or take your money. So I said I I said I ain't turning pro. I said I don't want to do that. I said the only way I turn pro. That's what I said to myself. I said, the only way I turn pro is if if things um, don't work out for me working a nine to five job. Mm. Uh, after the Olympics, and um, just so happened, I'm on. I'm washing dishes. I had a dishwashing job, mm -hmm. and uh, I uh, I had the dishwashing job. And let me see what I'm trying to say. You fell asleep. You fell asleep. No. That was the next job, the cleaning job that you fell asleep. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. Okay, thanks, love. <laughs> okay, I, I, I'm, I'm cleaning the women's bathroom. I'm cleaning the men's bathroom, and just so happen I goes in the woman's bathroom. They got, they got sofa in there. They got, they got a sofa in there. I mean, they got the, the, the lounge chair. They, I mean, it's really, it's really cozy in the ladies, in the ladies' room, and you know, and I, I, I went in there. I, I think I, I cleaned it, but. I, the, the the sofa, I, I couldn't help it, and it was a t it was, and it was a TV in there too, and and, and on. Uh, so I, I mean I, I just laid I, I laid back on the sofa. Next thing you know, I'm being woke up by my my supervisor cursing me to I mean cursing me out, uh, cursing me. I talking about me like a dog. I mean he was he was really laying on me. Uh, you can't do that. I don't give a who you are, Olympic, cause from the Olympics. They, they, they used to dislike me because I was an Olympic champion and they thought I was um, getting some special privileges and shit. Mm. But he cursed me out bad. And the thing was, I, I, I said, okay, well, he, and I used to ride to work with him every day. He cursed everybody out on the road. And my man in front of him, a guy in front of him just going to his door, what, he, he cursed the guy, the guy can't even hear him, the guy cannot hear him, he cursed the guy out just driving in front of him. 
he cursed everybody out. He was, I mean, he was a angry man. He, angry man. He was an angry dude. But um, he, evidently he was good on his job, but he was a supervisor. So he just told us what to do and what we had to clean and all that stuff. But it was all right. And then, but after he cursed me out real bad, you know, I just, I, I, I said, well, you know, it's time for me to go. Because anytime you start fucking up on the job, you know, sleeping on, in, the ladies, in the ladies' bed too. <laughs> Sleep, go ahead. <laughs> Tell him, Slim. Every time you go sleep in the ladies' bathroom. It's over. It's over. This is it. This is it. This is it. That's right. I said, damn. I said, I embarrassed myself, but only, only, only my supervisor, uh, he, well, he would curse me out. He cursed me out bad. He talked about me bad. I don't know who you think you are. Just because you're on, on, on Olympic shit, all that shit don't mean nothing. You got to work. You got. You can't be false to you on the job. I was like, I said, Mr. Austin. I said, Mr. Austin. I said, I was wrong. I was wrong. I said, but you ain't, you ain't, you ain't got, you ain't got to talk about me like. I mean, you ain't talk about me like that. Cause he was. I mean, he was. He was lower, lower in the bone. He was dropping the bomb on me. He couldn't wait to say it though. You know they were hating on the Olympic yeah. gold medalists. They couldn't wait for you to fuck up so they could say something to the champ. Man. Oh, Olympic gold medalists. Oh, they couldn't wait for you. Uh, I don't give a fuck who you think you are. I don't give, I don't give no gold medal or no Olympic. I don't care about that. You, you come here to work and you got to work. You can't be going to sleep on the job. He, oh, he, but he, but he, he was cursing me out though. And the thing was, I said, you know, I said, I de cursed and cursed and cursed and, and, and hurt, hurt my feelings and shit. And I said, Mr. I said, Mr. Austin. Austin or Austin? Austin. Okay. Mr. Austin. Austin. I said, Mr. Austin. I tell you what. I said, I'm going to do you a favor, and I'm going to do myself a favor. I said, I'm going to resign because the thing was, he didn't know me. I'd have whooped his old ass. I'd have, I'd have went on his old ass. I said, and the thing, I felt like going, I said, he don't know who he's fucking with. I'll whoop, I whoop, I whoop your old ass. <laughs> you say you pull out that St. Louis album. That's right. So I, 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 absolutely. I, I'd have went on his ass to up curse me out as old as he was. How old was he? He was pretty old. He had to be in his 60s, or probably 70s. And you at that time was what, like 18? I was 21. 21 yeah. I was 21. Stallion. Yeah, sure. I, I, and I'd have put a hurting on him. But I said, I, let, I said, let me get my ass out of here before I do something. Before I do something that I regret for the rest of my life. Yeah. And I didn't want to do that. So I said, I'm getting now. I'm getting the fuck out of here. Yeah. I'm going on and. Turn pro, cause and so, and so, and so, and so, yeah, I said, cause, I said, cause, so I ain't got, I ain't got to work for no motherfucker, but I ain't got to work for nobody. I work for myself. So shit, you I ain't lace them up. Huh? Not damn right. I, 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 I said, as soon as I got home, I said, Butch, you come on, you come on and come talk to me. Come on and come talk to me. See, now you got me thinking about an angle. Check this. I'm a conspiracy theorist to some extent. What if Butch? Paid Mr. Austin to push you into his hands. Could no, no, it couldn't have been. Okay. I was, I was cold busted. Okay. I was sleeping. I was sleep on the sofa. Okay. In the ladies' room, and you know, <laughs> men's room on on a toilet stool or something, <laughs> but not in the ladies' room. <laughs> <laughs> we were in the ladies' room. I said, damn. <laughs> that was too much. Was Bush happy to hear from you when you called him? I, I'm not sure, but I'm sure he was. I'm, I'm sure he was, because he, he wanted, he had Leon already. Mm. He had Leon, and he wanted me too. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to be with Leon, because I wanted us to be the best two brothers that ever strapped on the prayer glove. I said, Leon, we're going to be the best brothers that ever ever put on prayer gloves, so, I, so all we gotta do is stay together. And that was, that's what I was all about. We gotta stay together, Lee, cause they can't, if they separate us, they got us, they get us. Mm -hmm. I said, well, we together, see, they, they, can't, they can't pull us apart. Mm 
Mm. And I said, we can call our own shots. Along with my mom. Because my, <coughs> my mom can fuss. Mm -hmm. My mother can fuss her butt off. <laughs> she, she, she'll get the money. Yeah, yeah. Which one of money? She'll get that money. Yeah. Was she, Butch fair as a promoter? Yeah, Butch was good. Financially, he took care of everything. Everything was on up and up. Yeah, you know, and the thing was, though, me and Butch had got so close, you know, to where, you know, uh, he was a struggling promoter. He was a struggling promoter once he lost his job at top rank. Because uh, top rank, once, 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 uh, he, he was going to start his company, he was going to start his own company with Leon and myself. Mm. But Leon flew the coop. Leon flew the coop. So he ain't had nothing to work with. He was gonna start. He was gonna. He was gonna start his company with Leon as the heavyweight champ, and then they gonna work me on up till I get my championship. And Leon, Leon, and myself be a, a champion for Butcher Lewis. Mm. And Butch was pretty good. He was pretty good. He was good. He was a pretty good guy. Was uh, Leon Muhammad around at this time? Yeah, he was around. Yeah, Leon, Leon, Leon Muhammad was around, and uh, I think Bush, Bush, Bush used to always talk about him, saying, "Yeah, he he, he like him or some shit, something what, like that." Was he a matchmaker or what, what was he? I don't know. I don't know what Leon was. I, I, I think he he I think he uh, he knew something something about boxing to where he he helped Bush in some way or got a guy to get. To get let Butch promote his fight or some shit like that. Ah, right. Mm -hmm. So, if there was an instance where Aram had Bush arrested in New Orleans. Mm. Do you know anything about that? I, I ain't know about that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But that's what the, the, the second fight was. That was the second fight. Le the first fight with Leon and Muhammad Ali was in Las Vegas. Yeah. And then uh, Leon, Leon got mixed up. Leon got mixed up where Butch is the one who helped him beat, beat Muhammad Ali. Mm -hmm. He the one uh, gave Leon, I mean, got Leon all the sparring partners and big, big ass, I mean, big dudes, mm -hmm. big guys that was pushing Leon around. Leon, compared, compared to these guys that Leon was sparring with, Leon like a little a little a little girl. Mm. Like a little girl, but Leon but Leon was he was doing the best he could and he was handling them, he was handling handling them as best he could. But they, they made him strong. They made Leon real strong. I mean, they pushed him around, you know, leaned on him. Leon, Leon he was he was having trouble. He was having trouble in, in the gym, but he started getting better, he started getting better, he started he started kicking ass in the in the gym. He was kicking ass. Uh, Big Roy, was it Roy, Roy? His name was Roy, mm -hmm. and, he, and he had a, a, a little white uh, trainer, a manager was 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 the guy was. But um, but Roy was a big dude. He's and every time he threw a punch, he made noise. Hayes, Hayes, Hayes. I like every time he hit the heavy bag, every time he hit the eye, <laughs> he hooping the holler, making all that noise, <laughs> making all that noise. <laughs> and so, I mean, that, that was that was that was too much. And next thing you know, everybody in the gym making noise, <laughs> we copied off of him. Yeah. yeah. What's the most important thing you learned from Butch? Ah, let me see what I learned from Butch. You know what? What well, well, I liked about Bush, 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 he didn't mind having fun, mm. and, and 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 after after fun, I, I liked having fun. I, I mean, I, I liked having fun, mm. and uh, I think Bush probably uh, detected that. And like after most fights, we had a little party, you know, where we could dance, get our stuff off, you know, drinking, drink, drinking, and, and, and get some drinking in, and you know, and having a good time. And um, I think Bush noticed that about me, and he just made sure that that happened after after every fight. Where I had, where we was able to have have, have a good time. Mm. 
you know, we work, we were working our butts off, and uh, that that was uh, very important. That uh, shit, it's, it's very important that shit. As soon as you finish, you know, beating somebody up or getting beat or getting beat up, you know, you you want to have a good time. So you are the only man that actually beat Larry Holmes twice. Tell us about the first fight with Larry Holmes. Oh man, I was I was uh, I was ready. I was ready like Freddie. <clears throat> I was really like Freddie, and uh, and the thing was, uh, I uh, all the way up to the fight, all I all I was hearing was that I was supposed to be losing losing to Larry Holmes. So that kind of it, it was it, nerve wracking me, you know. So I, I'm like, well, so as we, we we're in the fight site, we're at the fight site. We had the fight site in, in Las Vegas. We finally get there because I trained in New Orleans. Finally get to Las Vegas fight site. You know all the butterflies and stuff stuff messing with you. And I'm like, oh man, I mean, how am I, how am I gonna fight the guy? And uh, a voice came to me and said, just just be yourself. Just be yourself. And say, look, if he start if he start running at your ass. She turn your back to him and run around the ring. <laughs> <laughs> turn your back to his ass and run around the ring. And see if you get get get, it, get him tired before he, before you uh, you start beating his butt. But I didn't know I didn't know what I was going to do. And then I saw uh, uh, on the monitor in, in in our dressing room, I saw Larry Holmes throw his one two, and then after his one two, he he started throwing punches. From down here, oh. I said, "Okay." I said, "So I, I, I gotta do is throw a left hook or something like, that. you know, once he once he's fighting like a cowboy. <laughs> dude, that's how cowboys fight. <laughs> they're like they they they, they all have no guard. They're like, <laughs> <laughs> so I said, "Okay, that's me. That's me. He fight like a cowboy." So, so I have my hands. I so said, "I throw a left hook." Possibly catch him, you know, catch him on the button, maybe, mm -hmm. you know. But uh, that's what I thought of, you know. And uh, but when I got in the ring, you know, it was it was different. It, it, it was all right. It, it, it wasn't no thing. I, I was I was nervous up up, up to a point. And then I was like, you know, I said, I said shit. You 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 you. You undisputed, man. You undisputed, light heavyweight champ, and you ain't got ain't nobody whoop your ass yet. So I mean, so what you gonna do? What I mean, I, so, so what? What do you think? What you think? I was like, I said, you know what? I'm gonna bluff this motherfucker. I said, I'm gonna bluff his ass. Sound the bell. I'm gonna I'm gonna walk out to I'm gonna walk out to the center ring. To, to to make believe that I'm gonna fight him toe to toe, and see how he respond. I said I'm gonna see how he respond because I, I hope he respond the way I would want him to, where he go ahead and, and give me respect. But but I did it. I did it. I walked in center ring and I started stepping in a circle, and Larry he respected that. He respected me, you know, in 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 uh, in that first round, and then. As I'm as I'm moving around, I'm I'm, I'm trying to get comfortable. I'm, I'm waiting on him to come on with the come on. I thought he's gonna chase me around the ring or something. Cause I'm ready to run. <laughs> I <laughs> I ready to turn my back to his ass. <laughs> you, know, you ain't gonna catch me. <laughs> you ain't gonna catch me now. So <laughs> I no lie. That's what I thought. I said this motherfucker come right at me. I. Ain't gonna, I I would turn my back to her and run around, run around this, run around the ring and see what, and see what happens there. But he respected it, you know. And but you know, I, that's what I was trying to do. I was trying to bluff him. I was trying to bluff him. I was trying to let him know, look, I'm ready to fight your ass toe to toe. Come on, come on, my boy. And 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 he he just like stayed back. And and this is what. And he ain't throw him. He ain't throw much of a punch. He, he threw a little jab every now and again. And uh, I just uh, that that 
I mean, right, right in the first round. When I when I, I threw a punch at him, he did like this. Mm. I said, no, he didn't take his eyes off of me. I said, he took his eyes off me. <laughs> he he doing some shit like this. I said, you you don't take your eyes. You. My coach my coach taught me. Merle, Jim Merle, the first guy, the guy taught me how to fight. He said, never, ever take your eyes off your opponent. Never. And so that's what I grew up doing. I ain't never took my eyes off my opponent. When I saw Larry take his eyes off me, I said, I could damn near do anything in here. I got I got I got hop, I got that boot and hop over here and throw stuff and throw some bombs on. I, it was strange, but um, but um, and then you know I, I I had a good good head move. My coach taught me how to move my head. Well, I'm, jamming, I'm moving up and down, and and, and, I, and then I learned how to do all kind of stuff in the ring where you throw your opponent off. You know, I'm doing like this. I'm, I'm bending down. I'm, I'm going walking over here. I walk over here. You know, I'm, I'm confusing my opponent mm -hmm. as best I can, as best I could. You know, but and it worked. And Larry, Larry just, um, I, I think the thing was, he uh, was used to wearing his, wearing his opponents down mm -hmm. and then taking advantage of them a, a little later on in, 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 in the fight. And, uh, but he didn't know that I wasn't gonna get tired that night. Mm -hmm. I was in good shape, I was in great shape. I, I, I was running sprints and Mackie had me doing all kind of stuff. Mackie, uh, Mackie Shellstone. Shellstone, yeah. He had me doing all kind of stuff and the thing was, I said, being that I was, I, was, I was supposed to be losing to Larry Holmes, I said, you know what? I'm gonna try to beat Mackie. I said, if I beat Mackie, the fight should be a cinch. This 135 pound man, and I'm doing everything he, he trying to put me through. And that lifeline, I didn't like that. With the rope, you, you got, you, he hold the end of the rope, I hold the end of the rope, and you gotta keep the slack, keep the slack in the middle. Mm. And uh, Mac, he he was he was good at what he did. He was good at what he do. I mean, the things he do, and he was good. And um, the lifeline, I didn't want. I, I didn't want he, he mentioned lifeline. I said, all right, I'll do whatever you tell me to do. I said, don't, don't don't break out the lifeline. No, don't <laughs> don't do that. Don't do that. But I had a lot of fun with Mac. And me and Mac had a lot of fun. Mm. Yeah, we had a lot of fun. And he. Um, he was pretty good, pretty good, and uh, the training that he put me through, uh, that's, that's, what, uh, that's what I put on Larry and won the fight. Were you shocked how much you frustrated him? Because after that, he had an interview where he said Rocky Marciano can hold his jock strap. He was going crazy all over the place. Well, not crazy, but saying things all over the place. Yeah, he got pissed off. Cause people started, he was, I think somebody was bothering him about losing or something. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, what was the question? Were you shocked at how frustrated you were able to get him? Mm -mm. No, I wasn't frustrated because... I, I mean, were you shocked at how frustrated he was? No, I wasn't shocked because... A lot of times in the ring, you gotta have more moves than X lax. <laughs> oh my God! I didn't even see that one coming, Jinx. The Jinx got me. I didn't even see that one coming. You said you gotta have more moves. You gotta, you gotta have oh, more. <laughs> you got to. You gotta have more moves than X lax, and do your thing. And know what? And it was like. Oh man, I'm telling you, and I, I had I had a wonderful time in the ring. I had a wonderful time in the ring fighting Larry because I had him confused, or, or he wasn't he wasn't being as aggressive as he probably thought he should be, or, or he should have been. Mm -hmm. But I was ready to I, I was ready for the throwdown. I was ready to you know shit take our clothes fight. No, oh. you you good? That's fine. All right. Yeah. Yeah. I I was ready. I I was ready. You know, I was ready to die. Mm. If I had to. That that was the fight of my life. And and you know what? And the thing was, I always I, at Joe Frazier's gym. 
uh, Val, uh, Joe's uh, floor man that, that ran the gym, mm -hmm. I used to, uh, when I, I would go, I would always go about to, uh, five or six, four o'clock in the evening. And uh, the guys, I would try to get some boxes from the younger guys. They would say, no, nah, man, you, you, got, you got to pay us. You got to pay us. I was like, I ain't got no money, man. You see, I ain't, I ain't been in the ring. I don't know how long. I ain't been, I ain't been in the ring. So where am I going to get the money from? So Val, Val told me, he said, Come, start coming in at 12 o'clock. He said, and he said, you can box some of these big guys, these bigger heavyweights. He said, you can help them with their speed. Help them with the speed. I, I, I said, okay. I, I boxed Tess Cobb. Mike Kornicki, Joe Goldston, I mean, I was, I mean, Giants. Mm. Uh, what, what's his name? Bone Crusher. I, I, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm boxing Bone Crusher Smith. Bone Crusher hit me one day and knocked me clean across the ring. He could punch. He was, he was a strong. He was a strong puncher. Sure was, but he was slow. But and I got some good licks in. <laughs> I got some good licks. <laughs> I got some good licks in. <laughs> But uh, I had a lot of fun with them guys, man. I could come in at 12 o'clock and uh, get some good work in. We were in and out, in and out. What's the, we had a lot of fun. Which fight was hardest uh, or easier, the first home fight or the second home fight? The first, the first home, well, the first, uh, well, <laughs> both of them was, was troubling, 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 but the first one was, you know, I had it together. But you know, I, I was I was throwing punches from round one all the way to fifteen. Mm. So that wore me out. I was wore out after after the fight. But I was I was in shape to where any time I had to fight, I, I I had I had to fight. But it it wore me out. I was wore out. Was it mental wear out or physical? Physical, because mm. I was working. Mm. I work. I had to beat. I had to beat them off of me. I had to move, I had to keep from hitting me by moving around the ring, you know, doing all kinds of crazy stuff to throw him off. And, um, but I, 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 I had, I, I made Larry respect me in the ring. Was his jab everything everyone says? He didn't hit me with it. He hit me, hit me, hit me in the mouth once or twice, but it, it, it wasn't to no, no, uh, it, it wasn't to no, uh, okay. effect. No, it, it didn't, it didn't. No, cause I, I had him. I had him. I was I was acting up. On I was I was walking around the ring, my hands down, like come on. I was say, come on, would you come? Come on, would you come on, man? He would. He he, he wouldn't come. Cause I had something for him. I had something for Larry. And the thing is, I, I said, I know I ain't hitting that hard, but Larry just don't like getting hit at all. So that's why he's run, running from punches. But um. It was, I mean, that first fight, I watched that fight every now and again just to see how bad I was, because I was, I was a naughty boy that night. <laughs> I mean, that was the heavyweight champ, and he had, yeah. never, he had never lost before, you know, so, and I, and I showed off. I was showing off. I, not showing off, showing off, because I always kept my, I, I, I like, when, when I saw him close his eyes, I said, Michael, <laughs> you saw that, but you didn't see it. <laughs> you know, you saw it, but you didn't see it. So, don't worry about it. I said, all right, all right, don't worry. Because I got to stay cool. I got I to gotta be cool. I can't try to get greedy or get try to show off or something like that. I said, I got to hold my composure and just, just do what I train to do. And that was a kick ass. Because mm. I had sparring partner. I had sparring partner after sparring partner. I'm, 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 I'm going four rounds with him, four rounds with him, three or four rounds with him. I mean, I'm working. And I, and, and, and I handled my sparring partner. I, because sparring partners come to the gym and whoop your ass. Mm. That's what they do. I, 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 I ain't letting them whoop my ass. You sparred with uh, Leon Taylor a few times. How was that working with him? Leon Town, yeah, he was good for uh, as a light heavy. Mm. For the light heavy, I, mean, I, I think I sparred with him a few times as a heavyweight. Mm. Just, just for, the, just for that speed and shit. I, I have to, 
deal with with him. Yeah, but me and Leon, we had a good time. Yeah. Yeah. yeah we had a good time. We had a good time in the bank called Leon used to get away. He used to get away with a lot of stuff. Yeah. Yeah, because Leon had fast hands and he and he 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 moved around and got out the way and I couldn't catch him at, at times. But I caught up with him every now and again. So he was really the cat. Yes he was. Yes Leon he was. Yeah. Leon was too much. We had a lot of fun though. We ended up laughing and fun. Well, I, I, uh, he called himself running away. He, he tried to run in, throw some punches, and get back out. He came in. I, 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 I don't know how I did it, but I just pop, pop, pop. I, I, I had a three punch combination. All of them in the head. Pop, pop, pop. He's like, I think, I think he got dazed or something. He said, he said something. He said, man, what, what, you, what, what you hit me with? What you hit me with? Yeah, we had we had a lot of fun in there. We had a lot of fun in the gym. Leon was good work. He was good work because he was fast, and I, I couldn't catch him all half the time. And he sharpened my skill. He 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 sharpened he sharpened me up with the in, in the ring. So he was a good technical boxer. Yeah. And quick, the cat. Yeah, that's what he was. He was a cat. He's he's he pissed you off though. <laughs> He pissed you off because you couldn't hit him. You couldn't catch him. He in and out, in and out. But, you know, but I, I, uh, I caught up with him a few times. We had some good workouts. Some good ones. 